Good morning from Little Creek Bee Ranch. I wanted to do a follow-up to our brood box cutting. If you were following along with some of our videos, you saw that we were cutting a bunch of brood boxes and talking about uh, the excess material we get off of it. There's a strip that we get off the side of the box when we cut and we turn it into either spacers or bottom boards. So I've decided to make a bunch of bottom boards and that piece right there is the piece that comes off the 1x12 1x12 10 foot plank two of those will give me three boxes so I'll have a lot of excess material to use now this is I think pretty cool because I get some extra distance out of my cuts and uh, we can turn out some pretty nice bottom boards here's the mite tray Let's see if I can get that out it's just uh, corrugated plastic material that's good enough we'll set that to the side and uh, take a look at the bottom board it doesn't have to be tall and thick like I said in the other video you want them thin and uh, we'll take the back side and cut it down to an inch that leaves a gap right here and the rails those little rails let's turn this over Let's see if I can those little rails are the plastic shower molding that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's and I just staple them in with the stapler it doesn't have to be fancy you know I just staple them in before I put the screen on I staple them in first and then put the screen on so put the screen on square it up and I'll take it to the end. Like I said, we'll run. Let's flip it around this way. I'll take it and run it out halfway on the porch so the feeder tray doesn't jam up on the edge of the screen. It'll sit on top of the screen. And then the pieces, let's see if I can do this. These, these little rails that you see right there, that little top piece, it comes from the rabbit that's cut right here. That's where those pieces come from. So I don't like using a dado blade because it takes out it's just too much wasted material. It's one big cut, but it's all sawdust and just chunks it out. But if I cut it like I showed you on the other videos, I get this other strip just right at 3 8 and it goes around the side and the back and it makes for a nice uh, side rail. I don't want my rails really tall because when, when you have a brood frame if you look let's see if I can uh, grab a frame if the frame uh, sits too too high up that's the bottom of a brood frame you want it just just above that rail but if it's too high up what happens is the bees will cut they will come to the bottom of the brood frame and they'll build a curled comb you'll have some curled comb and they will work to maintain their 3 8 space so so if they if it's too high up and they build curled comb at the bottom of that rail and I pull up I scrape against the next comb and it just makes a dead gum mess and the bees are mad at me and they're all upset because they don't like being rolled or rubbed and uh, that's not good for business we don't like that so so in my cutting over the years I've learned how to be really tight I mean I use everything I possibly can then the bottom support I mentioned molding under the porch I just stuck with the little 3 8 piece and run some glue on both sides and, and stapled it in. See, so it's just got staples on it. Real simple, enough support. And then on the back side, so I turn it over, the porch is uh, stapled in from the back side. You can see the staples right on the back side. So it's secure, there's not a lot of weight and stress. And then the plastic molding. Whoops. And we use the plastic molding we get from oh, Home Depot or wherever. You'll have to look around, but it's 
nice and easy makes a rail you can see the rails and that's pretty cool I'm excited about uh, doing these kind of projects because I personally need the bottom boards and then I'll sell a number of them they'll go with the kits as well and we just slide it in and uh, not too tight these these plastic boards they're all bent but I can turn it over and have some slop but that's okay I don't want them super tight they're plenty plenty loose but all of that that's like that's like getting a free bottom board to me because I save my material from my brood box cuts and uh, just measured out what I needed and I didn't I didn't have to uh, cut down this side it was the same coming right off the brood box cut I did have to go to some scrap and cut me a porch I think it's about two and three quarters same width so I used extra scrap these rails come off of the rabbit cuts so pretty cool man I like that I, I just I'm real excited about being able to make something I didn't really have to pay much for and I hope I hope that I inspire others now I like the screen some people say it doesn't make a difference and I'm here to tell you it makes a major difference because if you pay attention to your nukes those queens a lot of times will lay forward they'll lay a canted a forward canted football pattern they don't want to lay in the back because because there's not good airflow back there and if you're reading your brood frame right you ought to be questioning that going man why isn't that queen laying back there because there's not fresh air back here when you're sealed up and the nukes typically aren't that that air is dead and stale they want that brood on fresh air so i see that numerous times so I'm a huge believer in screen bottom boards. Even for winter time, we'll pull this out for winter time. And we just let them go. They're not trying to heat the box or trying to keep each other warm, but they still need fresh air. So anyway, there you go. I just wanted to show you the finished product. <clears throat> Here it is. You can do that. That ain't hard. It's easy enough to do. Just save your scraps. One by 12 by 10 foot plank. Number one white pine, two planks to get you three brood boxes, and then you can figure out the rest from there. So there you go, man. I hope that helps somebody. Have an awesome day because it's getting cold here. This is awesome. Loving this. New bottom boards.